Hey, what's up everyone? This is Silver Slayer and welcome to your daily silver stacking video. Thank you for tuning in. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a treat. I have a treat for you all today. Over a year ago, one of my good friends, Al Fortney, told me about this small silver stacking channel. He said I thought I might like it. So I checked him out and I have been highly impressed and a genuine fan. His content is pristine and he is brilliant. I mean, downright, he, he's, he's very, very smart. He's the numbers guy. He's becoming a chartered financial analyst, which is the polar opposite from my content and background. So I thought it would be extremely beneficial to interview each other and, and hold a convo. Just see, you know, what said our, our views on things. And man, was this interview filled with rich content. I'm going to put timestamps in the description and hopefully on the actual video itself so you can skip around to points you would like to, to hear, but I highly recommend you watch all the way through because as you will see throughout the interview, the way we adjusted and naturally flowed into these new topics really brought this incredible feel and vibe. I think it's just because how down to earth and, and chill we are, It just it's a really good interview and I'm really excited to post this on my channel. This is the most excited I've, I've ever been to post a, a video on my channel, or at least in a very long time. TJ is so close to 10K subscribers, as you'll see in this video. He knows what he's talking about. I really do think you would benefit from subscribing to his channel, and it would be so cool if we could get him there. Um, so, so yeah, without further ado, uh, here is how this interview happened. And sit back, relax, grab some popcorn, enjoy. Thanks, Silver Slayer, for... Um joining me today and or well, thanks for asking me to uh speak as well of course man of course of course yes. so when it comes to um precious metals like gold silver to me this is i look at these guys as savings accounts yes um because exactly i have so many friends who are millennials who two or three years ago they got me into high yield savings accounts and they're like, just put your money in high yield savings accounts to get 2% return or whatever. Um, and now if you ask them, okay, so what return are you getting on your high yield savings account? Many of them are saying, well, I'm getting like 0.5, you know, yeah. like because of interest rates dropping. Yeah. And, so, and, 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 you know, 2% return. But in 10 years, what you can buy, you know, with for $10,000 today will be probably around 3 thousand dollars then so yeah is it, exactly you, know, you got to think about the dollars purchasing power and include that exactly and then it, this past year effectively if you're just looking at cpi we're not talking about like the actual cost of living because even the bureau of labor statistics even says the cpi is not a cost of living index so if you have to factor in real cost of living it's probably mm. way more than what we have been experiencing yeah. uh, or way more than is reported it's people are experiencing the actual cost of living issues. Yeah. But um, this past year, we had about roughly, I guess you could say like four to 5% ish CPI. So if you had even the best high yield savings account of getting you 2%, that's still underperforming, you know? And if you just put in, for my view, what I do is I just, you know, put my savings into precious metals. And then over time, um, because I have a long-term view, this will definitely help me beat that uh, cost yeah. of living or CPI or whatever index issue that some may have. But if you just put it in like a normal savings account or if you just put it in a high yield savings account, uh, that high yield is usually less than the yield you'll get from this. Yeah. You know, you know that kind of reminds me of this. Of this. Um, th this is probably the most important but also just cool little little um idea of explaining the timeless aspect of of silver so let's say back in the day you you went to the gas station right and mm -hmm. you bought a gallon of gas for 50 cents so right. you you take out a walking liberty you hand the gas station clerk 50 cents to get your gallon mm -hmm. of gas with that walking liberty right mm -hmm. let's say you got back in your car filled the tank and you went into a time warp and landed in today's time that same coin can still get you a gallon of gas today. 
Mm-hmm. All you have to do back in the day was a 50 cent space value. Nowadays, you can take that walking liberty, walk down to your local coin shop, sell it for $10 and get yourself a couple gallons. Just that one coin exactly. from back in the day to today can still get you the same thing. Just that one Man. coin. That's, so that's a really, that's a really good, that's a really good point. Again, yeah. it's like, it's helping you save your wealth. You know, yes, it's, you're exactly. putting your wealth, you're putting your wealth in this thing and it's tracking along with you. And the unfortunate thing is that if you take a look at real wages going back into the late 70s, real wages have actually not kept up with productivity. There's actually a website that um, Mike Maloney um, talks about called um, WTF happened in 1971. And you can take a look at all these different charts of all of these things that, or all of these metrics of the economy where things just changed in 1971. And we all know what happened in 1971. Mm-hmm. That's when we got off of um, the gold standard you know, completely mm-hmm. or the closing of the gold window. And everything just kind of just, I mean, there are other things that are happening in the 70s too that caused issues, but productivity went up, but wages were just kind of like this. It just kept going straight, real wages. So if you're thinking, well, man, my wages haven't effectively really increased um, and if you're putting your money into a normal savings account, it's like, man, now I'm doubly shooting myself in the foot. <laughs> like my wages aren't increasing and my savings account is underperforming inflation. So how do I get any, uh, leg yeah. up? And it's like, well, I could get a new job, but if I can't get a new job, well, where do I put my money? Well, yeah. at least for me. And, you know, it seems like for yourself too, I think for me, the, the best savings account really is precious metals. Now, when it comes to other things, well, uh, my, my, my whole strategy with stocks or like real estate, the thing I'm thinking about for those assets is once I'm in retirement, I actually want to live off of uh, incoming cash flow. I know a lot of people may think about, well, hey, I have a 401k and I'll just live off of that liquidation that I have to basically do uh, with my 401k. But if you just put your own money into your own brokerage account or whatever, instead of doing the 401k, you can actually just decide never to sell. And if you have uh, stocks that are paying you a dividend, you can just live off the dividend. That takes care of that aspect. But then also, if you have real estate, that'll also give you um, some income as well if yeah. you make it rental real estate. So yeah. like for me, I'm trying to think of different ways that I yeah. can live off of income after basically people don't want to hire me anymore. <laughs> you know, yeah. that's a good point. That's really, you know, passive income. And, and there's a saying, you know, every millionaire has at least five sources of income coming. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just plant, planting seeds and blossoming wealth. And, and mm-hmm. I think as you're saying, precious metals has the backbone, but expanding out. Um, mm-hmm. And, and it, it does kind of, you know, make me want to get more into uh, the, the digital space like stocks or, cause mm-hmm. I mean, you're, you're, you know what you're talking about, like talking about long tour, uh, long short. I don't even know what half of that stuff is, honestly. Like I'm just a silver oh, no stacker. Worries. And, no worries, and no I feel worries. like that's, it's important though, for, for us to kind of, um, get into that. Cause a lot of times we're just cold blooded, you know, uh, if you can't hold it, you don't own it. Mm-hmm. And that does, especially with you want me to ask you, since you're transferring fake money into real money, like silver, mm-hmm. are you going to be selling the real money back to fake money? Like, or are you going to hold a percentage of your savings in precious metals? Because mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's a tricky question. Like, why would you put real money back into fake money? But that's how you survive. It's how you pay your bills. That's, you know, so what do you exactly. think about that? Yeah. So for me, I think about it in the same way that like a business kinds of, a business thinks about their balance sheet. So, uh, there's this ratio called the current ratio, and without being too nerdy, um, no, I, I be uh, nerdy, be nerd. I need. I'm about to write this down. Like I'm trying <laughs> to find a, a pen right now. <laughs> like, yeah. So basically, uh, you look at your current assets and your current liabilities, and your that's basically the liabilities and assets that'll last you within one calendar year. And when you look at your current assets. That's made up of cash and cash equivalents, marketable securities, and 
for business, it'll be their inventory. So whatever they sell throughout the year. And then they have some liabilities that they have to pay off during that year. It could be anything. Um, could be some debt that they have that is due within that year. So if you take a look at that, that's basically your liquidity. And for some people, we all have, uh, you know, maybe some kind of some bills, some debts or whatever. I, I would love if I could just p go in and just hand somebody some oh, silver and just like, all right, cool. Like I'll just give you some <laughs> silver, you yeah. know, but unfortunately, um, many, uh, I mean, most people don't accept that. I think in some yeah. states they do. Uh, I think it's yeah. considered legal t tender in some states, but uh, yeah, you do have to have some cash to take care of some of your bills. So for me, I try to think about what's the ample amount that I need or that, you know, now that I'm married and that my family needs so we can cover certain bills or cover yeah. certain um, uh, or take advantage of certain assets like, like real estate or something. Yeah. So the fake money is there for what I like to call optionality. The fake money is there to take advantage of certain assets that might come up or to pay certain bills. Yeah. If it's if outside of that, I'd rather have my 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 fake money into real real things. Yeah. So in um silver or you know, hopefully in the future real estate. Um but yeah, so, um yeah, go ahead. Sorry, when you were when you were talking about that. It reminded me of something I wanted to bring up earlier. Um, so you're a numbers guy, right? You're you're you know about stocks. Um, you know about spoofing, right? You're aware of spoofing. Ah, uh, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you think that? And this is probably the the most confusing, but 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 I guess main question I've really been wanting to to ask or, or to know about is: Do you think spoofing? has affected the the silver market and to what degree i think spoofing and in general i think spoofing is more of a, it affects the market but it affects the market in shorter time intervals okay so if you expand and you zoom out um you would take a look at the price of silver and based on and i'm i'm also a fundamentals guy so i know a lot of people may say well i'm more of a technical analyst or or analyst or I'm a fundamental analyst, I would probably lean more towards fundamentals, but I like to use technical analysis a lot. But generally, there are certain um, uh, certain metrics that are more heavily tied to the performance of silver than others. Oh, yeah. Oh, so yeah. if with these um, different, uh, whether it's spoofing or anything else, the question is, is yes, it does have an impact on the price of silver. However, is that impact stronger than other and, metrics yeah. of silver? So and, in my yeah. view, I would say I would think the dollar or real interest rates or the price of gold, for example, has a stronger relationship than yeah. someone spoofing. Um, now, of course, it does have an, it does have an impact. Again, I'm not denying that. I'm just saying that. Over the long term, especially from my perspective, I'm more of a long term person. I'd rather pay attention to the fundamentals because, sure, prices will go up and down with spoofing. But if the overall trend is riding along with the metrics that I look at, which are, you know, inflation, real right, interest right, rates, right, right. gold, then yeah. I feel comfortable holding on to holding on to silver because, I you know. The other things that kind of come into the market aren't really knocking it off off course. Yeah. If that so, makes any sense. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. So, um, do you think that silver will detach itself from gold or even, let's say, stock market volatility? That's and, and really when? interesting. So, it, the way I like to think about this is through what I like to call uh, regimes. So, every we're currently living in a certain in a particular monetary regime that's way different than it was in pre-1970. Mm. So post-1970, we now have, or people now view gold more as a commodity than mm. as a, uh, a part of the financial system. However, there are certain things like uh, uh, Basel III that has now re 
re um that was interesting redefined that yeah was real. It, Man, it's now redefined that. gold as um the same equivalent as holding cash so um going back to your question there's always something uh in the macro that can change an asset's behavior so you're always kind of you always kind of have to keep watch of it for example uh crypto has added a huge um and this is something i actually like to look at in my own research it's added a huge um connection or relationship to the price of silver and the price of gold in different ways so mm -hmm. for silver what you find is and i've done i've looked at numbers going all the way back to 2014 and that's when you first have publicly available information for bitcoin Crypto? yeah uh, but with bitcoin and gold i think every a lot of people know well the correlation which is interesting is positive and strong and if you look at the correlation between um, uh, silver and Bitcoin, the relationship is positive and strong. However, when you put them into formulas with other metrics, so with if you if you want to look at the price of silver and you base it off of the price of Bitcoin, but then also base it off of where the dollar is, then also base it off of where uh, uh, interest rates are, then the strength of those relationships start competing with each other. And then the one wow. that's a little bit stronger will actually, uh, stronger and positive, will actually start to win out. And the other one may, may have a, a weaker relationship compared with those other metrics. So what happens is with gold is that you find that it's, it's, it's a inverse relationship. So as Bitcoin goes down, you tend to see gold go up. When silver goes down, Interesting enough, you actually start to see, or I'm sorry, when Bitcoin goes down, you then start to see silver go down a little bit, which is really interesting. Yeah. Um, so, but what I do find is a lot of people know that once gold goes somewhere, soon silver fall, follows along. Mm -hmm. So I think what that data is showing or is basically showing is, well, once gold goes somewhere first after Bitcoin drops, and you might see silver drop. Then soon after, you'll start to see silver follow suit. So actually, I think that's what we're seeing right now with the gold to silver ratio. Gold is actually uh, performing a little bit better than silver yeah, right now. Yeah, outperforming, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I think soon we'll start to see that relationship flip a bit and we'll start to see silver then take over and start to outperform gold again. But yeah. um, if you look at all of 2021, uh, for the most part, the gold to silver ratio was edging up towards gold. Um, and in 2020, in, in the year 2020, it was more silver actually yeah. outperforming gold. I mean, so, the, the, the gold yeah. to silver ratio was 125 to one. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, so it was only, it was only, you know, a matter of time before silver started outperforming gold. Started outperforming, exactly. Yeah. yeah. But uh, sorry, I was kind of long winded. But <laughs> no. no, so so that goes into that. That was exactly what I wanted to to kind of introduce into the silver shortage. Because let's say, okay, so gold is more of a monetary metal, right? Jewelry, watches, rings. I mean, there is gold in cell phones. I used to scrap gold out of cell phones and laptops. Mm -hmm. But you know, I gotta ask you about gold, that too because I'm trying to figure yeah, out how to do that. <laughs> yeah, it, it's actually it's really cool, but you don't get mm -hmm. much. But um, you know, gold is used more for it, it's a monetary metal. Silver is more of an industrial metal. So looking at, you know, 5G towers, um, photovoltaics, which is in solar panels, silver lithium ion batteries, electric vehicles, silver is over the next de decade heavily going to be um, needed, but there's already a silver shortage where gold won't really benefit from that. So I do think silver has an opportunity to detach itself from, from gold over, you know, as we advance in this new digital technological era, mm -hmm. um, and, and like people ask, where do I realistically think triple digit silver will come in? And I say 2024, 2025. That's mm -hmm. when the, the Green New Deal will be in full effect. That's because by the year 2030, every automobile company is going to be electric or they're trying. So oh, yeah, that's all going to require yeah. tons of silver. But gold mm -hmm. really doesn't have a place in that. Um, yeah. And then also so, even platinum and palladium. Oh, yeah. Like, 
uh, I was even reading about some of the uh, fuel cells for um, more of those hydrogen powered vehicles. And they need a lot of, they, they, they go back and forth between platinum and palladium too. So even those precious metals are going to get a bid yeah. as well. <clears throat> I remember but, um, when, um, when platinum, <laughs> was it platinum that, that last year took off because of that reason? I think it was, uh, or was yeah, that palladium? I, 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 I think it was, I always get them confused because I know yeah, same, 10 years same. ago, same. Uh, one of them it was outperforming. Gold. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Last year, and I then think it, was it flipped. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But they go back and forth between platinum and palladium for those fuel cells. Yeah. Uh, but they've definitely been getting a bid. But like you said, like I think there's going to be a lot of demand for um, not only silver, but even other base metals. I know a lot of people yeah. are looking into um, maybe expanding to like copper. Or, I was about to say copper. Um, yeah, or aluminum and other things because the, the one thing that companies always try to do is keep their costs down. So the one thing that I am curious to see, and the rubber the rubber will hit the road in this decade is, will these companies actually be able to optimize down and use more copper or than they will silver? I think silver will still have a large relationship here, yeah. especially in like photovoltaics and everything. Um, we even have you know the Silver Institute um, studies coming out showing some of those projections. Um, but at the end of the day, we're going to get a lot of the, the general um, landscape is that we're getting, there's more and more urbanization mm. happening worldwide. Uh, yeah. And we're about to go into maybe another topic as well, another conversation yeah, I was, as well. I, but, I was about to say, because there, there's some stuff I want to bring up. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, but like, uh, if you take a look at what's happening in Asia, take a look at what's happening in Africa, there is a lot of um, urbanization happening in those areas because of industry and manufacturing expanding. However, what that's going to mean is there are going to be some uh, there's going to be some cost of living increases happening in those areas because of that urbanization. And every person per capita within those places that are urbanized are going to need energy and to support mm. them and that's going to cost um whether it's in the form of you know metals or whatever or what have you uh and i think it's going to be um metals in addition to we could say um fossil fuels and everything else but if we're going to go more toward this green um green economy we're going to have to still have silver in the in the um yeah. in the pipeline to be yeah. used for yeah, because because copper is would be the second you know most likely thing to replace silver. Because I mean, silver is the most highly conductive metal for thermal conductivity and electricity, mm -hmm. um, and, and copper would be a close second in replace. But I don't think anything would ever be able to replace silver. Um, yeah, the quality I mean, is like it's yeah. high quality. Yeah, yeah. But um, and, and then you can go into where are we going to get that silver from? I've I've heard a lot of people say the Green New Deal is silly. There's not enough silver to make the entire world go go green. And when people realize that, I feel like that's when silver's. I mean, imagine Joe Biden coming out and saying the Green New Deal is impossible because we don't have enough of this one word, which is silver. Imagine what that could do to the price. But regardless, mm -hmm. um, where I mean, where are we going to get the silver from? Is it is it innovation? You know, mining. You know, learning how to mine better out of the ground. Is it kicking in our front doors and stealing our safes, or is it space mining? I mean, we have to get it from somewhere, but there's not enough. Right. Right. And. With space mining, the interesting thing is, is that a lot of people think that with uh, the influx of a supply of silver, um, it's going to drop the price. I actually think the opposite. And the main reason why is the, the input cost to actually mining that silver uh, is going to be added to the final mm, price that point. we will have to pay for silver. So if you think about it, um, currently right now, we already have mines, people mine um, silver, and then there are certain costs that get passed down through the value chain. So you have um, refining that has to go into the, go into the process. Point. Yeah, I've never thought wholesaling. about that. Yeah, and think about it. If you have to send a rocket out into space, how much is that going to yeah. cost? And then oh, yeah. they have to mine the uh, yeah. actual like 
um, asteroid. Yeah. They have to bring it back to Earth, yeah, and then they have to do refining. Like that's yeah, gonna that's, add way more yeah. price or way that's, more of a cost. Well, well see that it, it, that that's kind of. But if they do mine that asteroid, I mean, they're talking about the asteroid. Okay, this is realistic. There's an asteroid headed towards Earth. It arrives mm-hmm. in the year 2026. It's called Psych 16 or 16 Psych or whatever. I did like mm-hmm. a whole docu series on my channel about this because um, mm-hmm. hey, this is real. NASA sending out a rover. Uh, this year, 2022, to go check it out. They said there's 500 quintillion dollars worth of precious. This thing is like covered in precious metals. Um, But do, is it realistic to mine an asteroid within the next four years when it arrives? I don't know. I don't think so. But I mean, and, and here's the point though. They said that if we do, then gold and silver would be just as about as, as rare as your everyday rock in your backyard and, and it would basically kill the price because it wouldn't you know it would be everywhere we would have unlimited supply which is interesting to think about and then it, even if we don't mine it within the year 2026 eventually we will be able to space mine and when we are able to get you know you know unlimited supplies of gold and silver what would that do to the price right right and i think it's it's I, I still think it's a little bit different than looking at when we find a new supply of precious metals on Earth. Because actually that happened, I think, in the mid-1800s. Uh, when it came to gold, We, I think there was some large supply that was found in Australia or something like that. And then the price dropped because of it. But I, I still think that when it comes to actually sending um, sending or industry actually, industry sending the, those, um, you know, those rockets or what have you, yeah. mining that silver, mining that gold, bringing it back down to earth, the input costs are so high. And I think a core, or and I think a parallel to think about is there's actually Martian rock that you can buy online. And think about Martian rock. It's not a precious metal or anything like that, but just the fact that, you know, it, it came from Mars. Yeah, People are willing it, to pay oh, X yeah. amount of money. Like I've seen some of these things go for like thousands of dollars just for like a little, you know, bit yeah. of, bit of that, rock. That, you know? I mean, I would, if I had money, I would do that. <laughs> yeah. That's actually, I think cool. um, uh, I, I learned about it because of, uh, I think the scientist Neil deGrasse Tyson said he had a something, some kind of product with Mars rock in it. But cool. imagine if people are like, hey, I'm selling asteroid gold, you know? Yeah. yeah. And if you think about the numismatic qual- quality that, so that, you know, yeah. that, that comes from that, you know, it's going to be insane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I think, honestly, if people, <laughs> if I, I honestly think there's going to be a higher price associated with gold and silver or any metal that's found on those asteroids than what we would find on earth yeah and because if you think about it again those those um those input costs like that like, would cost so for, much money i mean it imagine would cost so much money for them to like send a rocket out there or even mine, build the technology to, yeah 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 that exactly so to your point when it comes to like a higher price silver or, or higher price gold i'm really curious to see how much it would cost um and how much those costs would pass through to the end consumer, you and me, buying gold and silver. Yeah. So this also reminds me of a letter that Mike Maloney wrote to Elon Musk, which mm-hmm. is you know going to be one of the main people that is affected by the price of silver. Uh, he did the numbers, right? He mm-hmm. said um, he, he went over the numbers of whatever that, that Elon Musk's need per year for his EVs and SpaceX, and he said, if silver gets to a hundred dollars um, by the year twenty thirty, you will need, or you'll be paying like five hundred or seven hundred and eighty six million dollars, uh, or, or, you know, on silver. But he says if, or he says uh, silver at twenty five or twenty five dollars, that's how much you'll pay. But if silver gets to a hundred dollars, you'll be paying three point one four billion dollars. So he says, wow. Elon Musk, you need to be buying boatloads of silver right now because if you wait your cost production for all your companies is going to skyrocket you know and and that has me thinking like you know people like elon musk which is basically the mascot but any business like that 
I mean, if silver goes through the roof, like that could be detrimental. It, it really could. Oh, yeah. You know? For sure. And I think that's why a lot of these guys are scrambling to figure out how we can do uh, or how we can build some of this technology with some of these cheaper base metals. Yeah. But the interesting thing is that those base metals are actually still going up in price as well. Like every commodity over time is going up in price because of the dollar devaluation. And I mean, if you take a look at the price of uh, copper right now, I believe we are at... um, Actually, I have it right here. How much is it? Take a look. So when it comes to copper, copper right now is $4.39. Uh, that is a huge increase in price over time. And the thing is, is if these guys are looking to optimize and try to find another source of metal to use, they're still going to run to the same problem. All of these things are costing way more than what we initially bought them at years ago. Mm. So what are we going to do? So, you know, there's always going to be some cost issue, just like right now with, um, with, uh, I know some people have different views on this, but some people say, well, hey, gas or what, or what have you is at a certain price because there's, you know, fossil fuels are running low. And if that's the case, why wouldn't you follow that same logic over to metals? And if metals are going to supply is going to be running low because people are going to be using them in industry, then you have to expect those prices to increase. So to Mike Maloney's point, you know, Elon Musk is pretty much running on a, uh, a countdown clock. You know, how is he going to be able to make his products um, in perpetuity or as long as Tesla's around with, a increasing price of silver or an increasing price of most metals in general. It's you're still gonna have to it's, you're still gonna figure that out. And yeah. if you use another type of metal, now you're gonna have to deal with quality issues. Cause if, yeah. because as we know, silver has a better quality. If you go to something else, well now it's a lesser quality, you know? So yeah. there's a it's a toss up. He has to yeah, that, walk that fine line. Yeah. And Elon Musk is a genius. Like He's talked about physical gold. He's talked about Bitcoin, obviously. Like, I'm sure that he's buying a lot of silver just under the radar because if he mentions it, like, look, he typed it four letters, D-O-G-E. Look what he did with Dogecoin. Shot up like that. Exactly. So if people find out that he's he's a huge silver stacker, you know, so I feel like he's an undercover silver stacker. And, and Oh, yeah, yeah. Find, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, they have to find a direct source. And that's another point that um, not Mike Baloney, but David Morgan also sent a letter. And he made this point. He was saying, you know, not only just Elon Musk will use him as, you know, the mascot for this topic, but these these industries, they have to have a direct source to large amounts. Because imagine them paying, you know, a, a $10 premium for silver when they're buying, oh, yeah. you know, like, like, and if these industries don't, they're not going to survive. There's no mm-hmm. way. But, exactly. Um, and I, mean, I know for a fact, Elon Musk is in talks with a rare earths uh, mine. And I think, cause his whole thing is I've watched a lot of interviews with him. His whole thing is vertical integration. And for those who may not know, uh, watching this, that essentially means he wants to own pretty much all sources of product production within the value chain. So for him, if he can choose to, for him, if it costs less to develop, uh, let's say, for example, he isn't doing this, but let's say, for example, it costs him less to actually develop a mine, build a mine than it is to work with a mine to get product he will do that like that's his his whole thing is his whole idea comes from this idea called um first principles thought and it's a thought that a lot of physicists use and engineers use when it comes to building anything it's like what's the lowest level of truth and then let's build on top of that and for him it's like he was told when it came to SpaceX, that a certain part always costed a certain price. And he went back to that engineer and said, find a way to make it cheaper. Let's not just go with that price. Let's see if we can make it ourselves and see if we can make it cheaper. And he actually made that part and it made it cheaper. So his whole thing is, 
let's see if we can basically optimize this down so I don't have to come out of pocket more than I need mm-hmm. to. And I think for him uh, and a lot of other people getting into this space, we'll probably find a lot more people looking to get into mining. And yeah. we're already seeing China, for example, uh, wanting to, I mean, they're going into different areas or different countries in, in Africa, basically trying to mine different locations and own different areas. Because, I mean, we all know, like, Africa has so much yeah. uh, minerals and resources there. So China's getting in there. I'm curious to see if um, U.S. companies will start to expand there. Um, yeah. Maybe well, they already one the, are. One of the companies that I... um that I'm heavily, not heavily invested into, but I've been paying attention to, they, um, they have a mine in Africa. They're starting Zimbabwe this year. Mm. Um, but silver is mainly a byproduct, you know, it's found by accident when they're looking for gold, lead, and zinc. So I feel like there Mm -hmm. should be hopefully more primary, you know, focal silver mines as well. Um, yeah. And I know there's a lot like, uh, in this hemisphere, like in Mexico, like I know, um, first majestic, has a lot of um, yeah. They're one of the biggest, silver mines. Right? Yeah, yeah. And they have a lot of their silver mines, um, you know, pretty much in Mexico. So I think, you know, in general, a lot of these guys are just going to have to figure out, like, well, if we're going to this whole green energy thing and we all are competing for these uh, metals, you know, what's it going to do to the price? You know, yeah. it, like we as silver stackers... Did a pretty good job, I think, with, you know, bringing the price up, like you said, to $30 with the help of communities like Wall Street Silver. But imagine if industry, you know, oh, more yeah. people start to get into this whole green energy yeah. thing. And, there's going to be so many larger buyers. And, and, and you're a numbers guy. Isn't the price of silver directly correlated to demand? Like, like when demand's high, the price is – because I remember – I think I saw a chart where it's almost identical where the – When the demand of silver is going up a certain percent, silver follows suit almost identically. Yeah. And if you take a look at, um, so I don't use this in my, um, in my research, but, uh, it's a, it's somewhat of a, I guess you could say somewhat of a parallel. So I don't have, um, numbers for exact, let's say for example, like, exports on silver. I have that for copper, but I don't have that for silver. But a workaround for me is to use uh, volume. So silver volume in different, um, uh, let's say, for example, like ETFs or something like, uh, or different funds. So say, for example, SLV, right? Like Mm -hmm. I take a look at SLV because there's so much of a high volume that goes into it. And tracking it, it does track along with the price of silver. As volume goes up, you start to see the silver price go up as well. And there's an average volume generally for around, I believe it's, this is monthly volume, I should say. An average monthly volume, I believe it's around 300,000, or no, 300 million of monthly volume of SLV. Um, Oh man, let me that, see. If that I can makes sense. Find it I mean, here. that that makes sense because what was the the annual this year? Like one point two billion. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, here it is. So the monthly average volume of SLV is about three hundred five uh, million, and currently we're above it. We're at four hundred thirty two million. Wow. So, wow. Um, yeah. So we're elevated, and if you think about it, so with my. Um, With my forecasting model, I have a lower limit, central limit, and upper limit. So if you think about it, it kind of makes sense because we're actually right now between the lower and central limit of my of my chart or of my uh, forecasting model, and we're above you know the monthly average. So that's good to see. Yeah. Um, But generally uh, speaking, like you said, more people getting into silver means a higher price uh, for silver. And and also reverting back to um, these companies learning to to optimize. I know Tesla. I think it's fifty eight grams of silver, or, or, or not 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 Tesla, but the solar panel. It's it requires fifty eight grams, but they're trying to cut it down to I think around like fifteen or twenty grams per solar panel. 
And, wow. and I feel like they're going to start doing that with, like, like you said, with everything, right? With Teslas, mm-hmm. with, it, it is as they optimize, I feel like that would cut down a lot of the, um, the amount needed for these, for electric vehicles, for any, because I mean, silver is used for everything. And I feel right, like you're right. going to see more people starting to, as they realize silver's true value, starting to do that, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think for them, like, they're going to have to really, and, you know, everything, as they say, tech is essentially a deflationary mechanism. So as more tech kind of comes out, it basically drives down the price of um, pretty much everything the end user has to buy. So just think about TVs, right? Like flat Mm -hmm. screen TVs back in the 2000s were like an arm and a leg for like, let's say, a 32 or even like a 60 inch now, uh, way cheaper. Like I, I remember buying a 32 inch and I actually use it now as my monitor for, uh, my computer, but I (laughs) bought that for on black Friday for like 300, $400, Samsung 32 inch. Now I can go into like target or Walmart or anything, you can buy the same thing probably for like a hundred dollars, you oh, know, yeah. like yeah. Um, they figure out a way to make things cost less. So there is that aspect of it. But I do think as more and more companies kind of come online and try to figure this thing out, we'll start to see um, that rush into the space still add buyers into the space for silver. Like silver is always going to have a use case. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just a matter of, well, if we mine or if we all go into copper or if we all go into uh, gold or if we all go into silver. um, Oh, actually, another thought that I had was another issue that a lot of these tech companies have is all of our all of the metals are in um, tech still. So, you know, this is my phone. And the unfortunate thing is, is that they basically um, live there. So there's a bunch of gold that's still on your phone Mm -hmm. that is never getting returned back to these companies. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that's going to be an issue as well as more and more companies develop products with silver, with gold. Are people just going to hodl those items or are people just going to keep those items in their desks and drawers? Yeah. And companies are like, well, hey, we need more of those items. Like, what's Perth going Mint on here? Perth just announced that. You know? um, Perth Mint just announced they're, they're going to start scrapping silver out of cell phones and laptops to try to keep up. Because, I mean, U.S. Mint, Perth Mint, they all announced it. You know, they're having a very mm-hmm. hard time finding silver for their blanks. But also to add, yes, most silver is thrown away. I mean, most gold mm-hmm. is recycled, re-scrapped, you know, reused because it's profitable to do so, right? More people do mm-hmm. scrap gold out of because you can make a, you know, it's 80 times you know, more, more valuable. Most silver, no one's scrapping silver out of laptops, getting a few pennies. Plus most exactly. silver is used in these laptops and, and you, silver is used for all these uh, techno, you know, technological applications. So most silver gets thrown away with, within like a 10 year period. You know, most of the silver that, that gets dug up is gone where most gold is kept in circulation for decades. Right, right. So that's also something, like you said, you know, I feel like people are going to start learning or or just recycling silver more because that, that would be a huge, that, that would be a huge uptick to the, the supply if people exactly, did start. Exactly. So I think too, the other thing is like, well, if this, if this industry or if this shift into more of a green economy happens, and we start to see more and more companies develop products with silver in them and, you know, um, photovoltaics and everything like that. And they need that silver. Well, it's going to be like, well, where are we going to get the silver? Like we <laughs> we have it yeah. in the tech, you know, like yeah. but we don't have access to the tech. Now, I do know companies like Apple are trying to um, uh, have people recycle or we're well, not recycle, but like send them back their old iPhones, uh, iPhones or models or whatever, and that way they take those items, undo them, get the uh, get those commodities, and then put it into new mm-hmm. phones. But I think it's going to take a long time. And yeah, and I will say they're the only company I know who does that right now. I don't know if other companies, like let's say for example, um, uh, I believe is it Tesla who does the. Um, uh, 
I, what do you call those things? Photovoltaics, the uh, the sun. I'm losing the losing <laughs> words here. But basically, um, the cells on top of your roof <laughs> that get electricity oh, yeah, from yeah, the yeah. sun. Um, I think they actually make some of those, or uh, it's or it was an offshoot company that Elon Musk had that made those. What is it? City. Um... As, City, Elon Musk City? has that. Yeah, Solar City. Yeah, he has. That's his. Yeah, one of his other companies. And I think there's going to be other companies who make them. Yeah. And it's going to come to a point where it's like, oh, well, all of those metals are still in those. Like no one is recycling those things. Like no one's yeah. giving them back to the companies. Yeah. You know. So it's going to be hard for them, and that's going to lower the supply for yeah. them, and then you know, likely it's going to have an issue with you know increasing prices. I so always... as more commodities are being used in industry as more copper is used, as more silver is used, as more platinum, palladium is used by all these companies, they're going to have an issue when it comes to making more product when all of the input metals are still in their old product that they don't have mm-hmm. access to. Plus you know? investment demand, people like you and I. I mean, and as silver exactly. price rises, everyone's going to want a uh, slice of the silver pie. I mean, you, you, me, the, the, you know, Apple, Tesla, everyone is going to want silver. And, and I exactly. always use this term, uh, producers are going to turn into consumers, consumers turn into producers. People like you and I that want the silver will be selling it to people that need the silver. You know, and they, exactly, better, they better hope exactly. they need the silver or they'll, they'll pay any price because if, if you want the newest, latest iPhone to come out, you better hope that, they, that they're willing to, exactly. you know. <laughs> but uh, I did want to um, ask you one more thing as we kind of like wrap this this interview up. Um, mm-hmm. So this is like a, a, a three-part question. Sure, um, sure. So I want to know what your forecast for the price of silver is for the next year so in one year five years sure. and then 10 years and why mm-hmm. sure sure so i do think that within the next five years so currently we are in 2021 and in five 22. years i mean 2022 yeah, well. now right <laughs> yeah, yeah and in five years uh it'll be 2027 i do think we're gonna have another correction and from that correction we'll see um uh silver and gold go through the roof again. Um, The reason why I say that is because of um, how fast the business cycle and the credit cycle um, will likely develop. Now, this is just my perspective. I do think that because of the massive amounts of uh, money printing that we had and the aggressive way in which the Federal Reserve is, is trying, and I stress this, trying to uh, taper and raise, raise rates, I do think that's going to cause a um, shorter duration of a business cycle than the business cycle that we had basically last decade. It was one of the longest mm-hmm. ones we had. But I do think what we're going to see is, is almost a, a re, um, almost a reprise or reprisal of what we saw in 2018 when Jerome Powell tried to raise rates, and then it was just like, oh, we're about to end into recession. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. we got a yeah. reverse course here. So I do yeah. think if they're going to try this again, uh, just given the fact that we just got out of a recession in 2020, it's only 2022, we're going to have some kind of correction. And I think after that correction, we'll start to see prices go back up because they're going to start pumping even more money into it, yeah. into, the, uh, into the economy. And once that happens, I do think um, if we don't hit over $30 within the next year or two, I think that'll be the moment when we'll get over $30 and maybe even get it back up to $50. Yeah. Um, so I'll say, let's just say um, by, and I'll say, let's just say between 2023 to 2025, uh, we'll, have some, we'll have one of these corrections in my view, and then we'll start to see silver take off from there. And I do think we might see, we, I think we will see it get over $30 for sure. Yeah. I think that'll be a guarantee. But that, um, that's, that's not even incorporating the silver shortage. You're just going by the numbers of, you know, uh, of quantitative easing and, and interest. Exactly. If you I'm just, I'm just going off of that. Scarcity is so as well. Then. Exactly. Exactly. And I would say you're probably more of an expert on um, the silver, sh- silver shortage. I, I'm such a numbers person that yeah. that's just something that, yeah. um, that, that's is, why I, like I should say, I, I, I will talking. say, 
Yeah, and I will say, I don't want to say a numbers person because that has numbers in and of itself too. I'll say I'm more of like a, probably such a macro global yeah. uh, or global macro like economist or what have you ever want to call yeah, it. Yeah, looking at the, Where the I just tend to look at a lot of those yeah. fundamentals. Exactly. But um, I'd be curious to see, and I could probably do this on my own and I just haven't. That would be a cool the, video. relationship. Yeah, of like a silver shortage with a really, price of silver as well. That would well. be a really cool video. I got to see that because that's what yeah. I always talk yeah, about. Yeah. I always talk about that's the, that, that's the key to getting the most educated guests. Um, exactly. But I do think for sure we'll get over $30. And by 2010, oh man, I think the sky's the limit, honestly. Because then yeah. by that point, we'll have more industry trying to get involved in this with a shortage of silver. And yeah. um, luckily by that point, Again, in my view, I think we might even have, we might be approaching in 10 years, we'll probably have had another correction. Yes. So, That's the unknown variable. Mm -hmm. That wrench that gets thrown in that, that takes things way out of left field, we have to incorporate, mm -hmm. which a lot of people don't. It, exactly. So I think probably within, um, I mean, who knows? I do think, and in my view, I think any price is possible with the actual fundamentals behind it. So I think, honestly, when it comes to like triple digit silver, that's on the horizon, you know, just like in mm -hmm. the fact that people thought maybe double digit silver years ago wasn't possible. And yeah. look at where we are now, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, and people may have thought like gold was only going to be double digits. Yeah. Not only did it surpass triple digits, we're in four digits now. Yeah. You know? I mean, look at and, and I'm sure that you you could uh, easily talk on this, but even more so than I, because I mean, I look at the closest thing to what's happening now is the 2008 through 2011 period where silver got pushed to $50, right? 2008 credit mm -hmm. financial crisis, recession slash depression, billion dollar stimulus leads, leads to $50 mm -hmm. silver. Nowadays, recession slash depression, right? Credit financial crisis, trillion dollar stimulus, which is a much bigger number than a billion. And- mm -hmm a global pandemic and a silver shortage. So if that led silver to $50 within three years back then, imagine how much more extreme things are now. And I always say this pandemic exactly. sped things up times 10. What was going to happen in, in 15 years can now happen in five. Um, like exactly. with the business cycles you were saying. But. Exactly. And I think um, this, in that, in that, in that recession was so interesting because it wasn't really prompted by though we were about to approach an actual true business cycle correction back in 2019 we did have the inverted yield curve so a lot of people were expecting gold and silver to rise and funny enough in 2019 that's when i did buy gold and silver for the first time because i saw that inverted yield curve and i was like oh times to you know now mm -hmm. now's the time to start getting to gold and silver um and I was expecting that. And then I had no idea we're going to get, um, you know, a uh, uh, what do you call it? A pandemic. Mm -hmm. Now, that's a little different because uh, if if this were actually a true business cycle correction, I do think we would have seen um, a much higher silver price yeah. than we are seeing right now. The it, reason it, why it doesn't I think make we, sense that it's not. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think the only reason why we didn't see that is because. Literally every single time silver is about to approach that point, we start to see uh, the business cycle or not the business cycle, but we start to see um, manufacturing and just industry begin to correct on itself again because, yeah. oh, we got to shut down again. And now it's shutting down again. That brought down the mm. um, what's called there's there's a certain um, spread between interest rates, the 10 year and the two year. And when we saw the height of business activity come back, that spread was around uh, two. Uh, I guess I could say two percent. Currently, right now, we're struggling to get above like one point five. Like we're like we haven't even gotten to the the peak of where we usually go. Like the past three, after the past three recessions, we've always gotten um, gotten back up to about like two uh, 2.5 ish or so wow. like we haven't even gone above two yeah so and i think that's primarily due to the fact that uh when a 10 minus two actually does go up it's because of the expectation that there's uh, going to be an expansion in the economy uh due to industry but because 
we have to keep um or even just the world over we start to see all of these shutdowns just over and over again there wasn't that expectation that oh we're going to keep expanding in the way that we are um there isn't going to be this big global expansion because different parts of the world are closing at different parts or different times you know just when it looks like the US is opening up now China's closing down and we get mm. all of our manufacturing from China and then when China looks like it's opening up we start yeah. you know what i mean it's just yeah. like this topsy turvy yeah. thing that's happening but i do think yeah the next business correction, true business correction, and then expansion af after that, we'll truly start to see the price of silver really uh, move in the way that it should have moved mm -hmm. in 2020. That all of us are expecting and, and, and you know, hoping for. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. Well, I think that that is a great point to kind of wrap things up. I mean, we covered so yeah. many things. Oh, this is fun, great. man. I, yeah. I, I really enjoyed this. Yes, yeah, same. I mean, talk about the, the viewer as well. I mean, they could write a freaking book on all this. You know, I, yeah. I, I <laughs> that this is like a great little combo with like what I know and what you know. Because I've learned so much from you and I'm sure the, the viewer has. I just well. learned so much yeah. just now off of this. So like yeah. if the viewers are learning stuff, just yeah. know that. I'm joining you as well because I just yeah, learned the whole <laughs> uh, Man, I'm I'm really excited. Um, I, I I don't know if we should um, announce something yet. Um, I mean, it's up to well, you. I, well, I, maybe. I, eh, eh, no, well, I mean, eh, just know big things are coming. Just, just big know big things, things are coming. Yeah, big things yeah, are coming. We got for we sure. got some stuff. 2022 is going to be a very fun year. I can just promise you that. 2022 but, uh, is going to be amazing. Yeah, but um, yeah, I mean, I, I appreciate you coming on. Hopefully, I'll talk to you soon. Hint, hint, and uh, yeah, I mean, I definitely. I, I don't, I don't know what else to say. I mean, we <laughs> we've covered it all, man. Cool so. for sure. Yeah, and I want to thank you again for um, you know, uh, you know, setting this whole thing up. And honestly, also, I want to thank you for sharing a lot of the content, not just for me, but like you said, um, offline, just from like other you know, silver channels and like, yeah. I mean, you've showed a lot of immense support for a lot of channels. So like that are way smaller than you and you don't even have to do any of that stuff. So first of Man. all, I want to thank you for even um, doing that. For I sure. appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, like, like people need to see your content man. like they really do. So, I mean, it's well, not I about appreciate me. it. So, but yeah, man. All right. Well, I'll see you soon. I appreciate it. Hope everyone liked this. If you did like the video, subscribe to, TJ's channel as well. Um, his content. Yeah, keep subscribing incredible. to uh, Silver Slayer too. Yeah. We're trying to get him to 100K. Yeah, I'm trying to get. Yeah. To shoot, both of us is to 100K. You know, but <laughs> and, 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 and you got to hit 10K real quick. Everyone is watching yeah. this. Go subscribe. Let's get him to 10K. He's so close. How close <laughs> are you now? It's like 9.89 or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's close. it's almost there. So just like we just yeah. got 100 people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's easy. So, <laughs> all right. Well, I uh, appreciate you for tuning in. This was Silver Slayer. And uh, all right. this is TJ. I'll see you guys soon. All right. See you guys.